In today's video, how intermittent fasting helps with fat loss. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to address the idea of intermittent fasting as a tool for fat loss and why it works, why it doesn't work, what it does, what it doesn't do. And we'll talk about different styles of intermittent fasting. And the question comes from right here on my Instagram direct message. So on the screen here, that is my Instagram. If you go there and give me a message in my direct message as well, I look them over and I like to answer them here for you guys because to me, that's really what's going on with everybody. You know, as a coach and someone that deals with this stuff on a daily basis, you know, sometimes I lose touch with everyone's interested in. This keeps me grounded and I really appreciate the great questions. And again, thank you. So I'm gonna read the question. I'll put it on the screen here for you guys to see. I am curious how intermittent fasting helps or not with fat loss. I am someone who has screwed up my metabolism from years of yo-yo dieting with overtraining and wondering if fasting makes things worse or resets some hormones as it claims. Thanks so much. And so to answer the question, what I want to do is talk about a couple of the studies that are out there and a couple things that are going on with intermittent fasting. And first and foremost, I want to actually explain what intermittent fasting is because it's a term that basically describes that we're going to fast intermittently. But there are many more ways to do that. It doesn't always mean the same thing to everybody else. So we're going to talk about a different couple styles of intermittent fasting. The most common methods are fasting on alternate days or for whole days with a specific frequency per week. Now, that might sound surprising, but the common method that I was introduced to was called the 16-8 fast, okay, where you basically fast 16 hours a day and then you fit all your calories in for eight days. And in fact, I've done that before. And if you look at my video series, I, I did this for a little while to test it out because I didn't really want to talk about something without having tried it. So I tried the 16-8 fast. I've never done an entire day fast intentionally um, or alternate day fasting as it's referred to here. So I'll put here on the screen what a randomized study found and I'm going to read it to you so you can you can understand where I'm coming from. A randomized controlled trial that followed 100 obese individuals for one year did not find intermittent fasting to be more effective than daily caloric restriction. For the six-month weight loss phase, subjects were either placed in an alternate day fast or daily calorie, calorie restriction. Following the American Heart Association guidelines, after six months, calorie levels were increased by 25% in both groups with the goal of weight maintenance. There was no significant differences in weight loss, weight regain, or body composition in the two groups. No significant differences in blood pressure and heart rate. The dropout rate was higher in the fasting group. And interestingly, those in the fasting group actually ate less than prescribed on the non-fasting days and ate more than prescribed on fasting days. So what does this teach us? Well, a lot of times people discuss fasting um, in, a, in a manner that kind of has mythical proportions. What I mean by that is they think if they do some type of fasting, that they get this hormonal benefit that supersedes what happens with cal calorie restriction, meaning they don't get metabolic adaptations. And I think a lot of that has been debunked, but there are people out there right now watching this probably that are doing intermittent fasting and it works for them and they feel like it should work for everybody. But I'm here to say that's not the case. So when you, when you ask me, is intermittent fasting good for weight loss? I'd say, yes, of course. It's, it's a manner of controlling calories. And that's the most important thing. That's really the only thing that matters when it comes to weight loss is finding a way to create a caloric deficit that you can stick to that is both good for you physiologically and psychologically. I have no problem with fasting. In fact, I think a lot of people that do it do it wonderfully. Um, I have some clients that practice intermittent fasting and they do a good job of it because it works for their lifestyle. However, it's not for everybody and I don't think that it works for a lot of the reasons that people think it does. It doesn't supersede what happens in our body. Your metabolism is adapted based on your caloric intake. Whether or not you fast, you are changing your metabolic rate, okay? So if you restrict calories and you only eat in a every other day setting or you only eat in an eight hour window, that doesn't change the metabolic ad adaptations. What changes is your total calorie in for, for the day and for the week and for the month, right? So your body adapts to those changes over time, not to these short little windows and these short little changes, okay? So yes, can you slow your metabolism down when you're fasting? Of course. Now, you asked me the question, is it good for me because I've done yo-yo dieting for a long time? And I would argue this is probably just another method for you to control calories 
But if you're obese and you're overweight, what's the most important thing? I would say the priority should be over getting the weight down versus worrying about your metabolism. Because once the weight is off, we can actually slowly increase calories and get your metabolism back in a good place. But when you're obese, there are other things you need to worry about, other health markers. You know, heart health becomes a real concern, okay? Being able to move becomes a real concern, okay? Obesity has its own set of problems that I feel, and most people feel, is going to be much more important than having a slow or fast metabolism. You know, in fact, heavier set people probably have fantastic metabolisms because to maintain that higher weight, they have to consume a lot of calories. And a lot of times we can get caught up worrying about our metabolism. Is my metabolism good or bad? It isn't either. It just is what it is. It's adapted to whatever you've done and it can continue to adapt. But getting that weight off is probably the most important thing. Now, if it's somebody who's not obese and they're just trying to correct a couple pounds, well then it might be better to not be in a fat loss phase for a long time. I talk about this all the time, but we should not be spending the bulk of our life in a caloric restriction, okay? Only during periods of where we're trying to either get leaner, look better, or in the case of an obese person, get to a healthy body weight where we can extend and have a better quality of life. So I don't necessarily feel there is anything magic to intermittent fasting. I do feel it is a very good way of getting into some good habits, okay? Paying attention to what you're eating. Accountability becomes much better when you have a restricted time feeding window, okay? As long as you're not someone who's anorexic or bulimic and you go into a fasting window, it might just make you worse, okay? You might just start to become hyper-focused on binging during these short periods, okay? So it has to be something that works for you psychologically, okay? It has to allow you to eat well, feel good, go about your day, and be consistent. That's really the best diet, okay? And, and just like that study showed, the best way of caloric restriction isn't always one way or the other. And a lot of us can get caught up in these ideas of our way is right and their way is wrong. But that's very short-sighted, okay? We all have different personalities, different types, different styles, different things that are gonna work for everybody in different situations, different jobs, different lifestyles. Those are all gonna be an important factor. We shouldn't overlook that, okay? So finding a method of calorie restriction that works for you for a long period of time is really gonna be the only way that you are able to sustain fat loss. And then understanding what you have to do after that to keep the weight off. It's going to be, for most of us, a constant struggle. Something that we deal with for our entire life, okay? If you don't wanna put effort into it, well then you're not gonna get the result. It's just like anything else in life, okay? It's not like once you make a bunch of money, you can just stop, okay? You still have to manage that money. You still have to keep putting more money in. You can't just keep taking money out. The same thing with fitness and being in shape. It has to be a part of our lifestyle to be successful. Well, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.